So this video started based on a Reddit post by a user asking how good shrugs were, and I kind of made the claim that, well, shrugs are really good because of deck manipulation, and four shrugs and a body slam would basically be enough to just win low ascension. And people seemed pretty interested in that, so I did a run where I gave myself busted crown and four shrugs and a body slam. And it was extremely easy, go figure. So people were saying, hey, this run was too easy, and I completely agree. So this time, instead of giving myself, you know, busted crown, I just deleted my starting relic, deleted my deck, and went with four shrugs and a body slam. So we'll watch this first fight uh, just at full speed so we can kind of see what the general play pattern is, which is just shrug, shrug, body slam, and at low ascension, things don't do enough damage for it to matter. And we'll take explosive potions, and we'll be skipping every card, by the way. We're not going to be adding anything to this deck. Uh, and we'll start to speed up these these turns, because really it's just shrug, shrug, body slam, and it's just good enough. Now for the fight that's coming up, which is the five slimes fight, uh, I actually paused for a second here, because on high ascension, the five slimes never all attack at once. <laughs> this fight is this fight is way harder on low ascension, and I was like, wait a minute, am I going to take damage? So I was doing some math here until I just realized, no, there's there's just enough block and damage for you to just never take any damage from these hallway fights. So here we've got the first shop of the run, and in the original run of this, when I had Busted Crown, I kind of just bought meme garbage. I just bought things that I intentionally wasn't going to use because I was convinced that we'd just be able to kill the Act 3 boss with literally zero problem. And I was right. But this run, we, you know, don't have the extra energy and we're going to be taking, you know, try and try, we're going to actually try and win, right? So I spent, a, I spent a couple of seconds thinking about what to buy at the shop and just kind of settled on, you know, not much. But actually, we're going to slow down here and do this fight at regular speed because there's something I want to point out to, to newer players in particular. A lot of people were saying that deleting your whole starting deck is so powerful that that made the run trivial, right? And it is certainly true that deleting your whole starting deck and replacing it with better cards does improve things on average. Like, like starting with Pandora's Box would just be a better start than most runs. But it's really worth noting that most decks, if they started with five cards and didn't have a bunch of draw in them, would kind of get really messed up by the Sentries fight because of all the garbage they put in your deck. But you can see that the Shrugs here are really pulling their weight because it's like we're drawing through everything and we don't ever have to have a dead turn. It, it, that's, that's kind of what we're really trying to do here. We're trying to show new players the power of this. Like, if I did this same fight with five Iron Waves instead, I'd probably take a bunch of damage because the statuses would just wreck my deck. And uh, we're going to skip this impervious, even though it's clearly the right choice to take. More advice for new players of the game. If you ever meet the serpent, uh, say no. <laughs> like, I've got, I, what do I have, like 200 heart kills or something at this point? Uh, the number of times that the serpent is the correct decision to take it, I don't know. Never. <laughs> you know, Slay the Spire is not a game where you should say things like always or never, but man, the serpent is just a dead floor basically all the time. It's just it's just never worth it, right? If you like winning runs of Slay the Spire, uh, skip the Serpent. So we upgraded our Body Slam and now we're fighting the Super Elite, uh, which sucks. <laughs> Lagavulin with Strength is basically the exact same as regular Lagavulin. I was kind of like figuring out how to uh, optimize damage and it turns out that because Body Slam costs zero, you can do this kind of trick where you play one of them and then draw two more and you can weave in an extra eight damage. And I didn't really think about it more than that, but there might be some way to do this like an extra an extra time so you get one more body slam hit. But really, it's it's just good enough. Look at him. He's just, he's hopeless. Helpless, dead. So we didn't fight Gremlin Knob this act, so we're just going to mod that fight in. We're just going to, we're just going to use the console command to fight Gremlin Knob. A lot of people thought this fight would be really hard because, you know, the deck is 80% skills. But really, no, it's, it's just no problem. On low ascensions... There's just not enough scaling, there's not enough health, there's not enough damage flat to start with, and also Anchor really pulling its weight here. That's, a, that's another thing to really point out about these high efficiency decks with lots of draw in them. Uh, and we're going to skip all the rewards, by the way, we're not going to give ourselves extra rewards. But high efficiency decks with lots of draw in them, they make all the good relics in the game better. If we find Abacus or the Homie, as Frost Prime would say, this deck would just be insane, right? Like, any, any amount of energy or block generation on deck cycle would just be enough to totally trivialize the entire run, uh, because you'd essentially go infinite. And I really just want to hammer home how good these kind of decks are, so I decided to mod in the Colosseum fight from Act 2, you know, a powerful fight with many rewards. And uh, this deck totally 
even with, you know, wounds and gremlin knob and everything, ju it just doesn't matter. And I'm choosing to uh, kill Big Slaver here because Mercury's Hourglass is going to finish off Knob next turn. This flight dealt zero damage to us, right? Like, it's just, it's nuts. The wounds don't matter, the draw is too good, the damage is too big. And again, we're skipping all the rewards from these. These are just, just to show off that the deck is good enough, right? Upgrade a Shrug and uh, go kill the Act 1 boss. The strategy I had for the Act 1 boss was play Shrugs and then hit him. I'm speeding this run up by 400% at this part because you'll notice that we start the fight with 80 health and end the fight with 80 health and basically didn't have to use any brain cells. So Slime Boss ends up dead and it's no problem and we're offered Fusion Hammer, Slaver's Collar, and Tiny House. And I considered taking Tiny House for the memes here, but I'm trying to play a little bit seriously and make sure that I win this run. So we pick up Fusion Hammer because it's pretty clearly the right choice. And we're on to Act 2. And I spend a little bit of time looking at the map here trying to decide and really it kind of doesn't matter where we go because we're just so strong at this point. And this part of the run is still being sped up by 250% because it's shrug shrug hit, shrug shrug hit. So we'll watch the avocado fight at regular speed just to really hammer home how much damage the deck is doing at this point and how little we have to be afraid of anything at all. So we get our first shop of Act 2 and it kind of sucks. And then we get the spinning wheel and it kind of sucks. And then we get another shop, and it kind of sucks. Essentially three dead floors in a row, and it, it, just, it absolutely doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. The deck is already too good. And then slavers get bodied, and we pick up a duplication potion, and we keep going. Snake plant. Bodied. Avocado and rat. Bodied. Is the Book of Stabbing going to be a problem? No, it's going to die by body slam. Here we get to a shop where we actually have to make an interesting decision. I decide to pick up a Paper Frog, even though we have no vulnerable cards in our deck, because I figure that the vulnerable potion could justify it, and at this point I'm ahead enough that the only thing I'm afraid of is randomly dying. We can't upgrade any cards because of Fusion Hammer, so we rest and get the key, and then we find Sundial, uh, which is hilariously strong in this deck. It is, it is absolutely bullshit busted in this deck, so we straight up delete it. Uh, it's just too good, <laughs> uh, and we're going to continue the run on anyway. We're fighting the Collector, and I decide to use the Vulnerable Potion because I figure maybe this fight could get out of hand somehow, and Paper Frog, and I wanted to see how good it was. I figured the debuff might actually matter, and we still have the Entropic Brew and the Duplication Potion, but, uh, but it looks like the Vulnerable Potion was just way overkill. Here I pick Runic Pyramid, and I think some people would think that is a mistake, but actually I think Runic Pyramid is the best for this deck because the thing that we're worried about is crappy cards like Wounds getting stuck in our draw pile. And we'd really just rather have them in our hand so that every time that we use Shrug It Off we're getting something that we want to draw like the Body Slam to kill things with. And I'm trying to speed up the footage here as much as I can while keeping things comprehensible because a lot of these fights are just trivial at this point. And here I had the option to take Mind Bloom or something, but usually the correct option at High Ascension is to just take the original Act 1 boss fight and get a nice rare relic. And the rare relic we get is uh, pretty good. It's, it's pretty good. Uh, I don't know, maybe Calipers makes this run too easy, and I should have just removed that from the deck as well. But I decided to keep it because we already got rid of one relic and didn't even replace it with anything. Th this is just another example, again, for new players. When you have a good deck that has lots of draw and cycle, it makes all of the things that are good in the game much, much better. And here we take Bag of Marbles and Lantern so that on turn one we can just hit things even harder. Now I really dislike the spinning wheel game and the card flip game, and we got them both this run. And the reason that I dislike them is because on the first card flip, it's totally random what you get. You have no player agency. And for the spinning wheel, it's also totally random what you get, and you can't skip either of these events. So here I'm just picking cards randomly to see if I can get the curse, and I accidentally get a Dark Shackles, which is definitely an improvement. But I also get the Doubt, which is great. So we're just going to remove the Dark Shackles, and we're going to keep the Doubt, uh, because this run is too easy, and let's, let's just pretend things are going as terrible as possible. Good cards, good decks with lots of draw, they can afford to take hits and just not care about it. And uh, check out this turn one kill on this pylon from StarCraft. Bag of Marbles and Paper Frog and Body Slam, just, it just dies on turn one. It's just a ton of damage. 
Now in the replies to the Reddit post about four shrugs and a body slam originally, a bunch of people also brought up giant head, strangely enough, as like a, a potential issue. And nope, no, no issues here. This is like one of the first turns that we get to see calipers at work, by the way. Uh, we just keep the block through the turns and now body slam is just an infinite damage engine. And the message here to new players is that good decks with lots of draw inherently synergize better with the best relics in the game. And we pick up a bottle of lightning here, and why not bottle one of these shrugs? Sure, whatever. Nemesis could be a problem. We didn't kill it on turn one, and now we have to stall for a second. But Calipers pretty much takes care of that issue entirely. Darklings are a bit of an interesting fight because they are the only fight in the game, as far as I'm aware, that are both an easy pool fight and a hard pool fight. Uh, if you don't know, the first three fights in Act 1 are easy fights. The arrangement of enemies in the easy fights is meant to be easier. Uh, and after the first three fights in Act 1, then you can get more difficult fights. Same deal in Act 2. Uh, instead of getting three easy fights, you only get two easy fights. Act 3, you only get two easy fights as well. Uh, but Darklings are the only enemies that appear in both the easy pool fight and the hard pool fight. So do with that information what you will. Also, it looks like we're actually going to just outright kill the Transient. Uh, that's neat. So Tangela is probably my most hated fight in the whole game on Ascension 20. Every time you hit Tangela, the attack that they're doing changes. And one of those attacks can turn into putting a curse into your deck permanently. And it actually isn't, like, that bad usually. But god, if it doesn't just feel the frickin' worst. Oh hey, it's Darklings again. If you don't know why people always kill the outside Darklings, the first and the third one, it's not just vestigial muscle memory from the Sentries fight. It's actually because the first and third Darkling are the only ones that do multi-attacks. The middle one never multi-attacks, so you want to kill the outside ones because they benefit the most from strength scaling. So we lost a shrug to the falling event. If you don't know, if you don't know, in the falling event, the game randomly selects one attack, one skill, and one power from your deck and you have to remove one of them. But what most people don't know is that if you bottle an attack, or a skill, or a power, that it cannot show up during the falling event. And that's not super useful to know during regular play, but if you play on endless mode, then bottling the important attack skills and powers is extremely important, because if you bottle Ritual Dagger, the game will never be able to take that from you. Oh hey, Donu and Dekka are dead. Neat. Now a lot of people think that Time Eater would be the worst boss for this kind of deck, so we're just going to use console commands to fight him, even though we already beat Dodo and Dekka. So this fight is also sped up by 300% because, as you can see, we are going to start the fight with 80 health, and we're going to end it with 80 health. Now at the end of this fight there was like a weird thing that happened with mods for some reason, and it made me take a True Grit in order to progress. Uh, so we're just going to rest even though we're at full health. And then at the shop, we're going to pay gold to have the True Grit removed, even though you didn't even see us take it. Uh, and then we're going to buy Prismatic Shard. And this is not a meme pick. This is actually relevant. When you are fighting the Spire, Spear, and Shield fight, there is a debuff that happens on turn 1 or 2. And the debuff for Ironclad, Silent, and Watcher is to lose 1 strength. But for the defect, it is to lose either 1 strength or or one focus. And if you have Prismatic Shard, you will get one orb slot, and the game thinks you could be the defect. So there is a 50-50 chance that instead of losing one strength here, you'll lose one focus. And that is exactly what happens, which is which is kind of neat that we got to show that off. Now, does it matter that much? No, we're uh, kind of making quick work of this. But it is worth noting that when you get the burns in this fight, the burns always appear on the top of your deck. They always appear on the top of your deck. So that's one of the reasons this fight is so deadly at high ascension, and the reason you need to have draw is because if you play a bunch of cards on turn one and your deck's really thin at the end, you might just get two burns, two defends, and a strike, and then you're taking 60 damage on turn two, and that's just the end of the run. You might actually get to finish the spear and shield fight, but really the heart's gonna kill you because you lost too much health, and really turn two of the spear and shield fight is where you lost. We got an oddly smooth stone from that fight, which is actually pretty good in this deck, go figure. Again, for newer players, the message here is good decks that are efficient and have good draw and have some kind of good engine synergize really well with all the good stuff in the game.
on turn one, the heart is always going to add all this crap to your deck, and it's going to be in your draw pile, not in your discard pile, which really matters, because you'll see our draw pile goes from one to six right here, which means we are guaranteed to be given a whole bunch of crap in hand. So I use the duplication potion to make sure that the draw gets to the cards that I care about, and we're going to pop this in Tropic Brew because we're just going to be fishing for something good, and we find some energy, and we find some dexterity, and that's kind of exactly what we wanted. So I pop this attack potion and decide that I'm not going to take any cards from it, because that would be adding things to my deck, and, you know, we've gotten this far without adding anything good, so why start now? This is a little bit off topic, but for newer players, I definitely think the best relic on Ascension Zero is Potion Belt. And I know that might seem a little bit weird, but potions are able to bail you out of scenarios that you would regularly just kind of be screwed or dead in, and having five potions is just, it's just good enough. Like, you can come to the heart with a pretty crappy deck on Ascension Zero, and if you've got five potions and, you know, one of them's an Entropic Brew, like, that's just enough. But on higher Ascensions, you only get two potion slots, and your potion chance is lower, and the cost to buy potions from the shop is higher and the amount of gold you get from enemies and bosses is lower. So if you have the option to buy a potion belt and some potions on low ascension, just, just do it. They really can carry you through basically every relevant fight in the game. And that's the run. Four shrugs and a body slam is just good enough. Now, if you notice our score at the post game, it's kind of insanely absurdly high. And there's a reason for that. That is because we used mods to fight a bunch of extra elites and bosses, and the game remembers that we fought them, even though it's kind of outside of regular play. So we, we scored points for killing all those extra bosses and elites, and we almost got the uh, under 30 minutes achievement, but I was probably screwing around a little bit too much making this. And that's the run. If you want to see more stuff like this that is catered towards lower ascension slash kind of teachable things about Spire, yeah. Upvotes, likes, and subscriptions will do that.